Hey everybody, it's Chrissy Key Rollins here bringing you this week's energy update. And this one, this one's really good. You know, sometimes I think to myself, because I know I'm going to do this every week, sometimes I think to myself, <clears throat> what is the message that I'm going to bring this week? What needs to come forth? And sometimes I start to doubt and wonder what it is that I'm going to say. And then, bam, always it becomes very, very clear on what it is that I'm supposed to report to you. So I'm pretty excited and jazzed up as, um, you know, what happens whenever you're like, hmm, I wonder how things are going to go. And then, bam, you know, so I would invite some friends, but I'm not seeing that as an option right now. So what we're going to do is this, we're going to dive straight into it. Okay. So this week, what I feel is most helpful to consider and this is just an invitation, an invitation to consider life from a different perspective and see how you experience internal, externally, your life uh, once you start to look from this perspective. And hey, I see a couple of people are joining live. Welcome, chat in, let me know who's here. So what is going on currently energetically? And this has been an ongoing theme. So I know I've been experiencing it, people around me have been experiencing it, so I'm pretty sure you've probably been experiencing it as well. <clears throat> It kind of seems like some things are getting sort of ridiculous and um, challenging and frustrating and what's the word that I'm looking for? Like we see it like, like things are falling apart. Things are falling apart. Things are just not working out where you think you're going is just not happening relationships are getting super challenging work situations are super challenging there's this heightened challenging energy that's happening currently underway and what i've noticed to be a consistent theme in all these challenges within my own life within the conversations that i've been having with y'all individually and collectively really is that what is being, what we are being invited into. And I talked a few weeks back about the third, fourth, and fifth dimensional living. If you haven't seen that, I highly recommend you check that out for sure. Um, and I'll post a link in the comments below so that you can, you can find it um, if you haven't seen it. It'll help to better understand this. But as we shift from third to fourth to fifth dimensional living, we have to, in order to make that shift, we have to be able to see beyond what is happening. Like so far in life, we have been, for the most part, most of us have been um, interpreting the world around us through our five senses, through what we see, what we hear, you know, what we experience and interpret around us, what things look like. But the problem with what things look like is that we only get a snapshot of a bigger story that's under unfolding at all times. We get our experience within this bigger thing that is happening. So you don't really know what was going on in somebody's life. You don't really know what was going on in somebody's mind. You don't really know why they're doing or saying or acting or moving or reacting how they are doing. You don't, you don't really know. You're only witnessing it. You're only watching it. And that watching is going through a, a filter. It's going through your past experiences. It's getting processed by the mind and the mind's making sense of it. And the mind will start to look around and say, when was the last time I saw somebody move that way and talk that way? And what happened in that circumstance? Or where have I ever seen somebody move that way and talk that way? And what were the circumstances of that? You know, and that might even be a reference point of being like on TV. Hey, Lisa, I see that you're here. Welcome. Feel free to join in. Let me know if you're vibing with this. Um, so it could be, uh, that you have only seen it referenced on TV or played out in TV. It's nothing that you've experienced in your life, or it could be that it is something very similar to something else that you have seen acted out in front of you by characters that have crossed your path before, right? If you're not used to me talking about this whole play of life that we have going on, it's typically how I reference things. So what happens is that when we only go by what we see, we can only process it by what we've experienced. And we're shortchanging ourselves and the other person the opportunity to better understand and access more information to better understand what's happening. 
And when you just go off those actions and those words, the tone of voice, the body movements, what it looked like, what it appeared like, what it seemed like, what you're failing to recognize is that you don't know what it actually is. You just know what you saw or more accurately, once you really get into this stuff, what you think you saw, what you think you heard, what you think you experienced. And what life is asking for us to do during these challenging times is to shake off or loosen up the grip of what we think is happening by what we witness, what we see, how we see people move, the decisions that they make throughout life. And we have to go beyond it. We have been failing to communicate as a species to one another. We have been failing to connect human to human and even avenues like this. You know, I'm so grateful to have this amazing avenue to share this message with you, but we're not physically close to each other. We don't physically connect each with one another. We don't spend time together and open up bigger dialogues. It's a lot of face value happening. And especially when we're only bringing forth the best highlights of our life, which most of us do, because none of us like to highlight our worst moments. And for this reason, it's part of the reason that I do lives and I know that they're flawed and I'm fine with it. I actually welcome the flaws because if someone can see past the flaws and connect to the message and also receive with that message permission to go and be flawed, but just do what you're passionate about, then I'm happy to have served that purpose. What we need in order to get to where it is that we are destined to go or what I can am inviting you to consider and try out in your own life is to realize that there's more to the story. We can't take things just on face value. When you're only looking at what people present to you, that is not the full story. It could be a beautiful story. It could be not such a great story. Either way, it's not the full story. There is more to it. And for many of us, what's being asked of us is not to move away from what doesn't look, doesn't look right, but to instead move towards it and engage with it, but without your filters and engaging curiosity to ask better questions, to open better communication so that we can really connect and understand and free ourselves of this misery that we make inside of ourselves whenever we only take what we see and we write all the rest of the story based on our own little experience. So if you're facing challenges, and I know that you are in your life right now, and you feel as if they are persisting, they're relentless, they're not letting go of you, they are things that should be moved along by now or just really heightenly agitating you, just know or consider, again, Look at it from this perspective. Am I only going off of face value? Is there more to the story that I can welcome in? How can I tap into what could be happening beyond what it looks like? Or what better questions could I ask this person or ask myself about how I'm experiencing this person or circumstance in order to better understand what it is that I am feeling and look to clear up my own confusion and get back to my own peace of mind without needing people and circumstances to change. And I haven't explored this 100% every single where in my life yet to find out if it's an absolute truth or not, but I will tell you every time that I step into this experience, I find a bigger truth that more aligns with what I believe and it alleviates a lot of what I've been carrying inside. And this is part of the reason why I think it's so important to share the struggles, to share that you're not alone. Because if I'm only posting my highlights, if I'm only showing you posts like I've done over the past couple of days that are like, hey, I've created my life to the point that I can go spend time volunteering at my daughter's school. Or hey, look, my, my YouTube channel is, is about to break a new record for me in, um, in views. If I only, this is something that is just part of the human process. If I'm not sharing that part, if we don't start sharing that part of the fuller story, we're left to judge everything on the surface level. And that can, and sometimes, um, cause more misalignment than what we realize. So 
I invite you to consider this and consider your own presentation forward in this life and where you can be a little bit more honest in your expressions and be a little bit more full in your communication and also allow yourself to receive other people and other circumstances more fully. Okay, I'm gonna draw a card because I always draw a card and you can join me over in the Conscious Success community on Facebook. You can go to bit.ly forward slash uh, conscious success now, um, or just go on Facebook and search for conscious success community. I would add a link, but actually I'll drop it below. How about that? I'll drop it below. Okay. So let's see what the mermaids have to say. Hmm. Imrama. Imrama is what they have to say. This is card number 45. Imrama. And this is the last card of the deck. So that always signifies to me coming to an end, which I think is appropriate because in order to shift out of where we've been and start anew, something has to come to an end. And that's what's happening. Where you think it's crumbling, where you think it's dissolving, where you think it's falling apart, where you think it's slipping through your fingers. It's not. It is just shifting and changing to start something new. That's it. But before you close out your journey, you're being invited to take it in Rama, which is a soul journey. It is a wonder voyage, crossing deep waters, pilgrimage, journey of the soul. This is exactly, exactly aligned with what I'm saying in that you need to journey inside yourself. You need to navigate those internal waters, the emotions that you hold within yourself. You need to take a voyage across that vast, vast, body of emotions that you have and are holding within yourself and get connected to the soul within that desperately wants to be here, that chose you for this mission that has been calling you home, which is why you've been so angsty because this isn't it. There's more to the story. And as long as you're only seeing part of the story, as long as you're only bringing part of yourself to, this, to the table, as long as you're limiting your life experience as long as you're not connected to that part it's always going to be a struggle it's always going to be harder so these were soul journeys that were taken like in a, in a literal boat if we go into it in a literal way that you would go out on your own and venture the waters until you got that connected to yourself and then when you knew yourself you returned home purposeful on mission and I got the chills right now so I'm guessing somebody needed to hear that today and this is what's being asked anytime that life presents that challenge I invite you to consider taking that in Rama do that deep dive within yourself and say what is really going on here and what questions can I ask to understand more of the story what part of the narrative that's swirling around inside my mind to back up what I am watching happen am I fabricating Am I making up? And you're not going to know. You're going to go through the actions of what you think is expected of you until you start to connect to your soul self. So, would love to now. I'm getting some hearts from Lisa. Thanks so much, girlfriend, for being here, for hearting it up. Um, I would love to know your thoughts if you're watching this. Have you been facing these challenging times? Have you been watching these things crumble around you? And if you don't want to share that, that's fine. I'm okay with that. You don't have to be that vulnerable that quickly. Um, but how about that impact of social media and putting your best self forth, forth all the time? I know I'm in the business world, so I see a lot of other businesses doing their business thing. And it's so easy to start to compare or seem like you have something going on or that you don't. I mean, it's just, it's all over the place. And it's not the full story. It's not the full story. Behind every great image, there is more to that person's life. Behind every great celebration post, there is something more to that person's life. And that's a reminder that the strong people need to be checked in on as well, because they're not necessarily going to step out there and ask for help. They're not necessarily going to feel comfortable letting you know that something's wrong. Everybody needs to be checked in with. Everybody. I love y'all. Meet me over in the Conscious Success group, and I'm going to um, Conscious Success Community. I'll do a three-card spread there. Um, I probably won't be able to post it until after carpool, but I'll get it posted for you. Okay? So love you. Thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to share. Subscribe if you're seeing this on YouTube. And, um, yeah. Love you.